Today, John, we're going to talk a little bit about PVC alternatives. All right. This is pretty exciting stuff. It is. I particularly like PVC. I don't I know do about too. you. That's kind of my favorite. It's my life. It's, it is my yeah. life. But believe it or not, there are alternatives to PVC. That's, that's something. We should talk about I this. I know, we should. I, think I, I don't really want to, but we should. There's some yeah. confusion. We talked about vinyl, PVC, it's the most commonly used coat of fabrics probably, would you agree? I would agree, and it, what happens then is the term vinyl gets used for all the other ones in many cases too. Right. But we're going to set the record straight today. We are. We're going to be right. very clear. God. We're going to get into the weeds. We are going to You're just the man to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Polyurethanes, or PU, is PU. another alternative. That is correct. Polyurethanes, John, talk to me about polyurethanes. Okay, I will. I know you're, you love polyurethanes. I love them. I used to love them. Yeah. Not as much anymore. The, the tide has changed. The tide has changed, that's right. Polyurethanes, they're a totally different chemistry. Uh, polyurethanes became very, very popular in the upholstery business back, I would say, in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, because they duplicate real leather better than any faux leather. Pretty soft. Oh, soft. They are made with less mass than PVC. Not as thick. Not as thick. And But they have more elasticity. So they, it gives you that leather hand and that leather break, as they call it, that little cracking you see in real leather with polyurethanes. There's different chemistry in polyurethane. And you get what you pay for. Yeah, and you get what you pay for. Every time I hear, I just found this great pie, some great polyurethane. Great polyurethane. Cheap. Too good to be true. Right. Too good to be now true. there's three polyurethanes. There are. There are three different resin systems. For what poly, are they? There are polyester, polyether, and polycarbon. That's a mouthful, but John's going to take us through. Most of the polyurethane products that are made are used for apparel. Women's handbags, hand, handbags oh. big polyurethane, you know, soccer balls, Bike playground seats. balls, that type of thing, or polyurethane. And most of those were polyester, Cheap. polyether, cheaper resin systems. The polycarbonate resin is actually used in bulletproof glass. The best there is. The, that's the best there you is. You pay for that. You pay for that. It also becomes a little stiffer, so sometimes you do have to blend it. But good polyurethanes are made with a polycarbonate resin system or a blend of polycarbonate and polyether. Uh, most polyurethanes, because they were designed for other applications, were put on a square woven backing, like a sateen or a sheeting. It's, it's a woven fabric that does not stretch. Doesn't stretch. But it, with people sitting on it, they all stretch after a while, but then they don't recover. Polyurethanes are also more expensive than PVC. Okay. Good polyurethanes the, are. And even the bad ones can be. They can be. But the, the good ones for sure are. But the other thing with polyurethanes that's a negative is because there's not, a, not as much mass, they're not good around welt cords mm -hmm. uh, because they tend to stretch around that welt. And if people are sitting and rubbing against them, it can abrade the polyurethane right off the backing because there's no mass there. If you sit in a hotel lobby and you see the flaking of the material, people say, oh, the leather is flaking. It's polyurethane. And it's polyurethane. Right? That's a failure That's of a failure. polyurethane. That is correct. Yep. Fantastic. Next chemistry we're going to talk about is TPO, which means... Thermoplastic olefin. What was that again? Thermoplastic olefin. Oh my god. So what? tell me a little bit about that. I think I know this because on the dash of my car I have some TPO. You probably do. TPOs were used largely in roofing membranes too. Mm -hmm. They have good outdoor qualities. They are inherently antibacterial so you don't have to put any additives to eliminate the growth of bacteria. But they're not as soft as even some good vinyls and uh, they have lousy abrasion. So the TPOs that are used for upholstery have to have some other type of finish. Uh, in the case of the, the TPOs that are in our line, we put a polyurethane top coat, and they're not as easy to decorate. So if I'm a consumer or a designer, why do I want to spec TPO? Well, in healthcare would be the big area because they want something that's green. So if you're looking for an alternative to PVC, right. maybe TPO is an option. Maybe TPO is an option. Examination that's tables, that's dental right. chairs. Right, right. The hand isn't so Waiting critical. Waiting room chairs, chairs, that's right. The, you know, birthing areas, that, that type that's of thing. TPO. That's where you see okay. TPOs, yep. Probably in the last two years, silicones have been coming out more. I see them in trade shows and hear about people talking about I don't think a lot of people understand what silicones are. It's silicone. It became very popular, especially in the healthcare areas, because it is also inherently antibacterial. It's got inherent flame retardant qualities for easier flame tests. There are no additives, so it is considered extremely green. Pretty soft too. Pretty soft. It's got a nice soft hand, not a lot of mass to the silicones. 
But the the real if there's a real negative to silicones, it's three times the price. Very expensive. Uh, very expensive. So, you know, you've got to weigh what you're doing here and what the application is. You're giving a you're giving a budget to do a, do a job. Uh, you've got to stay within those numbers, and silicone can put you out of that budget. We also want to talk about a little bit about upcycle leather. Upcycle leather. Well, up, upcycle leather is basically using the leather crust that normally would get thrown in the dumpster. The real leather. Of the real leather from a tannery. So we've upcycled those scraps by buying them from the tannery. Normally they'd be hauled off and thrown into landfill. A, to a landfill. It gets pulverized and it's put through cleansing baths where they take out any of the heavy metals, specifically chrome. They become 99% VOC free. Then that pulverized upcycle leather gets sheeted and reinforced with a nylon reinforcement. There's two layers of polyurethane. One is the skin layer, one is the finish layer. And at the end of the day, the upcycle leather product is 70% leather and 30% PU in the nylon. Leather on a roll. Leather on a roll. So Whereas a hide is an organic, not a. Right, product. you get a lot more scrap on a hide. Right. Benefits of leather with the utilization of almost 100% because it's leather on a roll. A lot of people get um, the term bonded leather and upcycle leather confused. They think it's the same thing. Bonded leather is more of a gimmick. All bonded leather is, it's a polyurethane with a textile backing that they run through a machine that actually sifts leather particles on the back with a little reinf... A little pixie dust of leather. A pixie dust of Not leather. Real leather. No. A lot of the urethane base that was used for bonded leather upholstery was polyester and polyether and oh. not polycarbonate. You had hydrolysis and, and failures in the field. Avoid bonded leather. Avoid it. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. So overall, John, at the end of the day, we talked about a lot of different types of coated fabrics. Right. PVC still feels like the best value workhorse option. It's the workhorse. It's got a little bit bulkier hand, but it tailors nicely. You don't get the puddling because you've got stretch and set. A lot of color design options. It'll take deep embossings. Leather looks. You can, you looks, can print on it. Silk you can looks. put you could yeah, all sorts of looks. It's very versatile. You can put different finishes on the surface. Uh, at the end of the day, high traffic areas, um, you know, casinos, twenty-four hour restaurants, PVC is the way to go. Well, it is at the end of the day, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and share below. If you have any questions, leave the comments in the section below, and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Thank you, John. Thank you, Eric.